Thank you for expressing an interest in AutoCAD courses provided by CAD Bureau Southern. The aim of this free tutorial is to show you roughly the format of how we demonstrate our courses in the hope you'll visit us for more formal instruction. This specific tutorial is to show you the AutoCAD 2012 user interface and how it all works. Note that previous versions such as 2011 and 2010 etc um, uh, may look different to this version but the principles are still the same. After you start up AutoCAD 2012, you your screen should look similar to this. It shows the AutoCAD Exchange window. Unless you had previously clicked the Show Window and Startup tick box in the bottom left hand corner. I'm just going to close the AutoCAD Exchange window down by clicking the cross in the top right hand corner. This shows the standard user interface. In the top left hand corner of AutoCAD 2012, there's a big red A. This is called the Application Menu. And the application menu provides access to AutoCAD's files, commands, settings and documents. If I click on that big red A, there will be a short delay um, before it opens up. On the left hand side are some basic Windows commands. And if I go back to the top, on the right hand side are documents that are previously opened. So if I hover over one of these documents, it expands and shows you a preview of the uh, drawing and a little bit of information about it when it was created and, and the location of it. As I open up more AutoCAD files, some of these will disappear off the list. However, if you want to keep one of these permanently in the list, you can click on the pin, such as this, and it will remain on the list despite however many drawings you may open. It will only disappear off the list when you unpin it. You can change the format of the um, how these are displayed by clicking on the order list here. You might want to change it by access date, by size, by type, and so on. I'm going to change it back to by ordered list. To the right hand side you can change the size of the icons such as large icons, small images and large images. However, I prefer to have them as small images or small icons because just by hovering over it you can see the full display anyway. Now if you don't see your recent used files here, it may be because you haven't got any recent used files or you've ticked on click this icon here which is your currently open documents. I've only got drawn one open at this stage so there's nothing else there to show you. I'm going to click back on recent documents. At the very top here you've got search commands where you can search for um, various letters within a particular command. So for example if I wanted to search for the line command I just type the letters LI and everything that starts with um, the the letters LI displays in your list. So you've got line at the top here, followed by construction line. Linear starts with LI, so that's the new list. On the right hand side, it also shows you the locations where the command is, is located on your drawn ribbons. These are the ribbons here. I'm going to close the LI down by clicking on the cross at the end of the box. On the left hand side, there's various commands such as new, open, save, save as, export, etc. Some of these have got an arrow next to them. In fact, they all have apart from save. And if there's an arrow next to them, the menu expands out to show you various methods uh, of what you can do. So, for example, on export here, I can export it to DWF file, DWFX, and so on. Now, you don't have to expand these commands out. If I just wanted to click uh, export to a DWF file, for example, I can uh, just click on export here, and it always takes the default. Um, command which is always the top one. Say for example if I wanted to do a save as it always save it as an AutoCAD DWG file here. However if I wanted to do a save as CAD standard I'll have to click over here. Same for example under print. If I wanted just to print here it would if I was to click here it would plot a drawing. However if I wanted to print a page set up you'd have to always click over here. To get rid of the application menu just click in this area here. To light of the application menu is the quick access toolbar. Now the quick access toolbar provides access to commonly used commands and the workspace drop down list, which is this icon here. Now, the, the, the um, workspace drop down list gives you access to other configured menus. Older CAD users might like the AutoCAD Classic menu, so I'm going to click on that, and after a short delay, the old fashioned AutoCAD Classic menu displays. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go back to draft and annotation, which is the default for AutoCAD 2012. To the right of the workspace drop-down list, you've got a series of commands. Over here, you've got new, 
open save save as etc this is quite handy rather than to keep clicking on the big A to get the, those particular commands you can add or remove icons to the quick access menu by clicking on this little down arrow here the commands which are currently in the list are ticked and those which aren't are over here so I can add properties here for example and it gets added to the list or if I want to remove it click on the drop down list and click on properties and it gets removed over here is the navigation bar and if you click in for example line and not and click on um, the binoculars here it will search for all the help online I'm not going to do it at the moment because it will display the AutoCAD exchange window which I don't want to, want to come up with beneath um, the quick access menu we've got file edit view now you won't have these by default I just like to have these this is part of my customization however if you wanted them what you do is you click on this drop down list and it's the menu hide menu bar here to get rid of them so it goes back to here and you would go back to show menu I'm going to leave that off again so we've got the defaults at the top here we've got home insert annotate parametric view etc let me just go back to home these are what's called ribbon tabs and these provide access to the ribbon panels which is where you generally find your commands under home I have a draw panel modify panel layers panel and so on next to each piece of text we have draw modify with a drop down box and layers so for example under draw there's some less commonly used commands under draw if you want to um, use several of these commands what you can do is pin those commands to stop prevent them from collapsing if you once you've finished using these commands you can unpin them and the panel collapses again some of the commands such as circle arc etc have um, an arrows and these provide access to other forms of these commands so for example the default arc command is a three-point arc and that is displayed in the icon however if I do start center end click on that you can see that the icon changes like so if I cancel the command by pressing escape and I just wanted to start center end command I can click on this icon rather than have to click on the drop down box the same is true for example on trim um, if I click on this and go to extend can you see the icon changes and every time I want to do the extend command I just click on here rather than drop down list if I wanted to go back to trim I'd have to click on the drop down list and select it and the icon changes back to trim this big white area is called model space it's where you do your drawing and your drawing is referred to as your model the first golden rule of AutoCAD is that you draw your model at exact sizes so if something is five meters long you drive it, draw it at five meters if it's two millimeters long you draw it at two millimeters if it's 30 inches long you draw it at 30 inches don't worry about scaling your drawing at this stage you always draw it at full size it makes life very very easy some of you may have a black background which is easy to customizable and it's purely down to personal choice we prefer using a white background because that's the format for most windows applications and also paper is white so as you draw on your screen that is the format of how it will print on your paper that's not strictly true but um, that's just a good rule for, to follow at the bottom left hand side of your screen you'll see uh, an icon here with Y and X this, this is the Universal Coordinate System icon or UCS for short it just shows which way is X and which way is Y as I move my cursor around in the far very very bottom corner of the screen down here you'll see the coordinates change as I move back to model space now if I start moving in the next axis which is the horizontal position you can see the sizes there increase by quite a bit if I go in the Y axis you can see the second set of figures change by quite a bit but the third set of coordinates don't change at all that's because this is the Z axis which is used in 3D in AutoCAD LT you won't have that third set of um, uh, coordinates the first set is X across 
second set is y vertical. Beneath the white um, model space area you, you have the word here model and to the right you've got two tabs called layout 1 or layout 2. Now these tabs, if you click on them, display the paper and you can have an infinite number of paper sizes. You can have loads of these and the idea is um, if think of drawing your house um, in plan view you could have your walls, windows, doors etc. Um, and then you might have things like the electrics, plumbing, your ceiling grid, your roof floor plan, your furniture etc. Now a lot of people have separate drawings for those particular electrical and plumbing layouts and furniture layouts. In AutoCAD you put everything on your model and the idea is by doing that you can sort of see where the electrical may clash with the plumbing. So it's a design feature. But if you wanted to, to print off these drawings, say one drawing for electrician and one drawing for your plumber, you filter out what you want and place these on these layout tabs. The layout tabs are also handy for having different sizes of paper. So for example, you may want only an A4 sheet of paper drawing for your plumber, but you might need an AO drawing for your electrician. We'll come on to layout and paper spaces in a separate tutorial. For the moment, I'm going to click back onto the model space. Beneath model space is something called the command line. There's a very thin grey line running the length of the screen. Everything beneath that is what's going on at the moment and everything above the grey line is history, what you've previously done. If I start the circle command, you can see in the command line here it says specify centre point for circle. I'll just highlight that or try to highlight it, which I can't, but this is what it says. Now if I press escape to cancel the command, the command goes above the grey line so it's actually classed as history what you've previously done and beneath the grey line next to where it says command there is nothing which indicates you're no longer in a particular command. Beneath the command line and to the right of the coordinates you've got a series of icons. Now I don't like these icons, I prefer the old fashioned method uh, of displaying text. Now I can right hand click on any icon and where it says use icons I can click on that and you'll sort of see the revert to the old fashioned text which I think is more intuitive. If I click on one of these, such as object snap, it turns blue and if they're blue it, that indicates that these are turned on. Click on object snap again and it turns it off. Now this is called the status bar and as a general rule of thumb things in the status bar when they're turned on control the accuracy of your drawing and we cover what these actually mean in other lessons. For the moment I'm going to turn DY on which stands for dynamic input. Now with dynamic input it has various other functions but one of them is to demonstrate um, tool tips on your crosshair, the crosshair being your cursor. So if for example I click on circle it now says specifies for center point for circle with your current coordinates next to your cursor. That wouldn't display there if dynamic was turned off. I'm going to press escape to cancel the command. On the subject of tooltips, if you hover over a particular command such as circle, you get a small tooltip and after a short delay it expands out to give you a bit more, more detail. On the far right hand side, next to your status bar, are various other icons such as model, etc, etc. These control settings within paper space and model space as well as the size of annotations in your drawing and we'll cover those in other classes as well. On the right hand side we have here a navigation bar and there's a command here which is zoom extents which underneath if you click on the drop down arrow beneath it shows you all the zoom commands. You may sort of not see that, it might be off the screen so I might try and do it over here a bit better. If you can't see that I apologise. Um, you have to take my word for it. Um, and again if I clicked on a command such as zoom scale um, and press escape to cancel the command the icon here changes to zoom scale as they did over here. But I don't like zoom scale. We'll click on zoom extents, which is one I use quite often, and the icon changes back to zoom extents. At the top here, we have something called a view cube. That's primarily used in 3D, so we won't actually use it anymore. That finishes the brief introduction to AutoCAD 2012 user interface. We hope that uh, you will attend one of our courses and uh, for the moment we thank you for your time.